Hello ladies and gents, this is Daniel for Rock the JVM, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can make a snake game in Scala in just a couple of minutes. Now, this video is the result of some experimentation that I did with Scala FX, a library that is used for graphical user interfaces, GUIs, for Scala applications. This is pretty cool, it's not really idiomatic Scala, but more of a wrapper over the Java FX library with a bunch of Scala niceties on top, but I wanted to take this opportunity to create something a little bit more fun Fun for the channel. Now, as recommendations, I would advise you to just watch this video and follow along my thought process for fun. And if you want to replicate this, you can read the blog post for a slower version if you want to do this yourself. And I'm going to attach a link to the blog post in the description as well as all the code that I'm going to use. All right, so I have here a small Scala application that I made after creating a new Scala project. So I'm going to write this from almost from scratch, and under build.sbt I added the exact build SBT defaults that the Scala FX library page advise you to have, so this is pretty much stock, and here in my SnakeFX application I'm extending JFX app 3 and this start method that will basically draw a wide rectangle on the screen with 600 by 600 pixels and the contents of that particular scene is going to be just white. So if I run this application you're going to see a small window with just white and I'm going to draw everything that we're going to need for the snake game as we go along. Now as I start implementing this game I'm going to start a little timer. I'm quite curious how fast I can go with this but I have to warn you that my speech is going to be a little impaired because I'm going to type a lot of code and I have a lot of things in my head and I won't have enough time to verbalize exactly everything that I'm going to do. So I'm going to rely on your attention, so your focus in this video, and you'll probably find that this is quite fun. So let's go. All right, cool. So the state of the game is going to be dictated by the positions of the snake and the position of the food. So I'm going to create a case class and I'm going to call this state and this is going to be uh, my snake as a list of tuples, double double, and the food is going to be a set of coordinates, double double. So double double. And this state will have to be updated, so I'm going to define a method, let's call this new state, and this will take a direction as an int, this is going to be an option 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is going to return another state, and I'm going to obtain my xy as the snake's head, so I'm going to have my snake.head, I'm going to compute the new head, so I'm going to have new x and new y as a, I'm going to say dir match, and in case we have one, which is, let's say, up, I'm going to have my x and y minus, and I'm going to use 25 here, the length of the rectangle, and I'm going to have my case two, which is down. This is gonna be x and y plus 25. We have the coordinates from upper left corner. I'm gonna have case three, and I'm going to move left, so x minus 25 and the same y. In case four, I'm going to use x plus 25 and the same y. In case I get anything else, I'm going to return that same x and y. Cool, so this is my new updates. Now, in essence, I'm going to have my new snake, new snake as this new set of coordinates, new x and new y, so this is going to be the new head, and I'm going to have my snake.init, so this is going to be the first n minus 1 blocks out of the snake, but I need to check if I'm hitting my tail or if I'm out of bounds. So if, let's check the coordinates, so new x is less than 0, or new x is bigger than or equal to, and I said 600 pixels, that's how I scroll that in my state, so I'm going to have 600, same for y, so new y is less than zero, or new y bigger than or equal to 600, or if I'm hitting my tail, so I'm going to have snake.tail.contains, I'm going to use new x and new y, and in this case I've hit my tail, so I'm going to return my initial state, and I'm going to define my initial state, so let's call initial state or initial snake as a list of double double, and I'm going to use, let's say, 200 and 200 as my starting point, then I'm going to have 225 and 200 as my next block, and 250, 200 as my third block. But this one is going to be to the right, and this is going to be the head in the snake, so I'm going to put that first. So I'm going to put that, and my initial snake is going to be if I hit myself. So I'm going to have my initial snake. Otherwise, I'm going to say new x, new y, colon, colon, snake, dot, init. Then I will need to check if I'm 
eating my food. So this is me crashing, else if food is equal to new x and new y, in this case I'm just about to eat my food, then I'm going to return the food coordinate and then I'm going to have my snake uh, exactly as it is, else new x new y dot snake init. Okay, so I'm going to remove my curly braces here because I've had too many. Okay, this should be the next position of my snake, but I also need to compute my new food. So new food is, and if I have the same condition, if I'm eating my food, I need to generate some random food, and I'm going to implement that. Otherwise, I'm going to keep the same food, and I'm going to return a new state considering my new snake and new food. Now I need to generate a random food. I'm going to create a method called random food, and this is going to be a set of double double, a set of coordinates, and I'm going to use random. So I'm going to have random that I'm going to import from scholar 2 random next int, and I have 600 by 25. That's going to be 24. So this is going to be 24 positions times 25, and now I'm going to copy and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So comma, this exact thing. So 25 dot whatever, man. So I'm going to have my random food. This is a randomly generated square on the map. So this is basically the entire logic of the entire game. So the state and the state updates. Now I need to actually draw something on the screen and I don't remember off the top of my head. So I'm going to have content as, and I think is going to be a new rectangle and new rectangle here I need to import that and I'm going to have my x as let's say 200, y equals 200, width is going to be 25, height is going to be 25 so that's a square and color or fill I think it's called white or something. Now white is the color and I'm going to put that to green and let's run this application and see what we have. All right, so we have snake, new snake, new food, any val, whatever. New snake is going to be a list of uh, double double. Come on compiler, don't work with me. All right, initial snake. Initial snake is a list of int int. I'm going to have a list of double double. Type safety, man. All right, cool. So we have a little square, green square, cool, and let's draw multiple rectangles. So I'm going to create a small method here under the state. I'm going to have, let's call this rectangles, and this is going to be a list of rectangle and rectangles are going to be obtained by me extracting this thing. Let me create a method. So I'm going to define rect at xr. This is going to be a double yr as a double double and color. And this is going to be a color. I think that's the variable type. And I'm going to return a new rectangle with x equals xr y r and that particular color. I think that's good. So I'm going to call this method and in rectangles I'm going to map the food. So I'm going to have a rect with food dot underscore one, food dot underscore two and the color I'm going to use red here. This is going to be the color of the food plus and then I'm going to have my snake dot map and in case I get an x and y I'm going to return a rect with x, y, and I'm going to use the color green for the actual snake. So this is the rectangles. I'm going to use this rectangles as the content of my scene. Now this is the point where it gets clunky, so I'm going to hope that I'm going getting this right. So I'm going to have my val called state as, and I'm going to use an object property. This is native to uh, ScalaFX. I'm going to use object property with a state containing my initial snake and some random food as my initial variables. And as content, I'm going to have state dot value dot rectangles. Now I want to run this application real quick to see what kind of UI I'm getting. And I have my snake and my food. Good. We need to move them on the screen. Cool. Let's create a val. I'm going to call this frame that I'm going to increment as my frames go along. So this is going to be an integer property. And I'm going to have my integer property starting at zero val. And I'm going to call this direction. And this is controlled by keys. This is going to be another integer property starting at four. And this is going to be basically right. All right, cool. So I'm going to change the direction, change the frame. And upon changing of the frame, so I'm going to have frame dot on change. And on change, I'm going to say state dot update. And I'm going to have my state value, value dot new state. And the direction that I'm going to pass as parameter is direction dot value. This is going to be 
uh, updated elsewhere. And that elsewhere is going to be on key pressed. So I'm going to have on key pressed. This is going to be a handler between key and I'm going to use key dot get text match and in case I get and I'm going to use WSD W this is going to be the upward so direction direction dot value equals one case and I'm going to copy most of this because I don't really care too much case uh, and I'm going to have one two uh, three and four and uh, I need to be really careful here the two is down and that is s three is left that is a and four is D that is right cool now the final thing is the trickiest because I need to run my game loop so I'm going to have my game loop and this is going to take an update function so I'm going to have my update as a function that is returning unit and this is also going to return unit and I'm going to not hog the main display thread so I'm going to use futures so future and I'm going to have to import future from Scala concurrent I'm going to import the Scala concurrent execution context implicits global I don't care about the global execution context at the moment I'm going to have to call the update function update and then I'm going to do a thread sleep and I'm going to sleep 1000 by divided by 25 25 frames per second I'm going to multiply that by 2 because my snake is going to run a little bit fast okay so that is it and then I'm going to do another flat map and I'm going to run my future game loop with the same update function yet again. So this runs in an infinite loop. Now, in my main function, I'm going to run my game loop, all right? And my update function is going to be just to increment my frame. So frame.update, and I'm going to have my frame value plus one. Now, I also need to update my content depending on the frame, and I need to have access to the content within the stage. So I'm gonna have my frame.onChange, and I'm going to update my content. So content equals state.value.rectangles. Right, let's run this. So I think we're ready. And okay, I have some stack traces. That is because probably this runs on the same display thread. Okay, so current thread. Cool. So I need to use platform dot run later. So I can run on the same display thread. Cool. So I think that is it. All right, and we have a valid snake. Now, my snake resets because if I run on the opposite direction than my snake is currently traveling, then I'm basically hitting my own tail, and so the snake continuously resets to the middle, but that's expected behavior. Otherwise, the snake runs pretty well, and it can eat food. The food generates in various corners of the scene. That is quite awesome. Now, if I hit the wall, I'm resetting back to the original position, and we have a functional snake game. All right, great. Now, I made the mistake of stopping my stopwatch at the moment that I run my first application, which was 10 minutes, 8 seconds. I secretly wanted to do this whole application in 10 minutes, so that's that wasn't too bad. Now, in order to make the whole application run, I would add another minute to that. So there you have it folks, a snake game in Scala in 10 or 11 minutes, depending on how you want to think about it. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe. I hope you had a lot of fun. And check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn as I post fresh updates on upcoming material. Check out my blog as we have long form written content on everything in the Scala ecosystem. And check out my website as I have hundreds of hours literally on everything in the Scala ecosystem. Until next time, I'm Daniel signing off.